do you feel sometimes that your life is out of control everything is there with you externally but you still can't seem to uh, make a good use of the things that you have can you make the best use of a bad bargain do you feel happy in life if these are the questions that you ponder upon then this is the right video for you because today we are going to discuss on the fourth house the fourth house is a very important house it is such a house which controls the chart <laughs> which means it controls your life why because the fourth house who is the primary karaka for the fourth house who is that planet yes you got it right fourth house has many karakas we have moon as the karaka for the fourth house then we have mars we have venus and mercury is also linked to the fourth house it's a hell lot of uh, uh business it's a it's a place where many planets are involved in their business but moon is uh, the primary karaka for the fourth house you know it shows the mind it shows the mother or motherly personalities the health of the mother your interaction with your mother or motherly personalities it can show females in your family also at times or anybody who is like a queen in the family most likely uh, the mother the moon also shows the inheritance that you get from your mother i don't mean to say physical inheritance like land property money all this the dna that you get the thought process that you get from your mother is very much also from the fourth house it is from the moon so therefore the fourth house is a very important house all right so most of the astrologers ignore the fourth house and then they see oh they have these big big opportunities in the chart but then uh you can't capitalize on them all right so i had already made a video on the fourth house i'll put it here at the end of this video you can also watch that okay god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me regarding your horoscope then please go down to the description section where you'll find my web page okay website rather <laughs> and yes if you are new then please subscribe to the channel and if you want to watch astrology basics videos then you can go to the astrology basics playlist all right so what is the fourth house the fourth house is i had made a video in that i said the fourth house represents how you take things in life do you take things very personally malefics in the fourth it's difficult to digest <laughs> something bad happens to you somebody does something bad or there is some injustice that happens to you somewhere which somebody did unknowingly not that they did it knowingly but you feel oh this person has deliberately done it right so are you always seeking revenge are you not able to let go of things well of course none of us are perfect nobody can claim that oh i can let go of everything right that these dialogues are generally given by people like let go let go let go in the materialistic society it is given by people who generally did not have to let go of so many things <laughs> but if somebody uh, doesn't have a spiritual uh, schedule in the morning or in the evening depending on your uh, schedule <laughs> if you do not have spiritual practices which you do in the day primarily in the morning then if something which you like very much you can't stay without it it's taken away from you then it's very difficult to say you know oh you know just let go don't be attached my god it's very difficult to say right you have the experience i have the experience so therefore the fourth house tells you how you how you take things in life right how do you handle praise how do you handle criticism how do you handle uh, pressure in life many people think oh just see the 10th house and then we all know how this person is going to be in the career or uh, in the professional front 
but what they fail to see is the fourth house because the fourth house is the house where the sun is setting yes uh, so sorry the sun is uh, at its opposite uh, no it's like it's in the underground right as we say patal right so sun sets in the seventh house and then it goes to the patal and then of course when he is in the first house he's rising again right and when he's in the tenth house he's at the peak of his power so therefore the sun is moving to the fourth house and all the activities of the day are put to rest okay therefore the fourth house tells you how you will react to certain things that come in your life or rather everything okay so therefore the fourth house is a very crucial you see if you go back to uh, the uh, vedic culture what would happen is it was very important that uh, when a man and a woman would unite after marriage for having a uh, a good progeny they would do a garbhadan sanskar like spiritual practices set of practices on the day the couple is uniting and even before that right so there are like different samskaras which were given so both house tells you what kind of samskaras did you get from your family from your tradition from your lineage okay it's very crucial and then the man the father was supposed to have a very spiritual uh, upbringing and a spiritually dedicated uh, fulfilling life and then uh, the mother was supposed to or was is always supposed to both the mother and father they especially after conceiving the mother is supposed to uh, do spiritual practices uh, during pregnancy and especially now uh, hear from the sadhus or the saints or the rishis or read uh, the bhagavad gita the shrimad bhagavatam or any religious text uh, depending on their culture and uh, many times i meet so many people who are who have done uh, who have had great achievements in the spiritual life externally and internally also and when i talk to them i always uh, i always hear that oh uh, like uh, one side met a lady she was a great devotee of lord shiva and then she was telling me that when she was in the womb of her mother her mother would uh, recite so many uh, stotram and so many prayers related to lord shiva so that impression came down in the womb and then she was blessed similarly we have the example of kayadhu who had the great prahlad maharaj who is one of the 12 mahajans as shrimad bhagavatam declares so i am who narada shambhu kumaro kapilo manu prahlad prahlad is one of the 12 mahajans so the fourth house actually tells you how you what kind of uh, both the good and the bad what did you inherit from your uh, mother or the lineage and how can you use the fourth house you can use it uh, especially see the fourth house is a very important house why because it is in trines to two dusthanas okay it is the only house which is you know in trines to both the dusthanas like 6th 8th and 12th right they are dusthanas you know that but this is the only house which is like in the trines to both of the most malefic houses in the uh, horoscope right the eighth house and the 12th house what is the fourth house fourth house is the house of rejuvenation right and um, the uh, eighth house is the house of cleansing like going to the toilet as soon as you get up taking a bath that's that is what takes you out of the eighth house all right and 12th house is the house of sleep how was your sleep therefore fourth house is like uh, when you are getting up in the morning that's like the fourth house okay and then you are cleansing yourself that's the eighth house and when you sleep that's what is the 12th house so therefore the fourth house tells you it's not just a physical rejuvenation imagine you had a setback in your career how do you bounce back how do you um, get back right because setbacks are usually 
a characteristic of the eighth house. And then if there is a severe loss, then the setback is even higher. So therefore, if you have a setback, which is the eighth house in any area of your life, like health, career, finance, uh, in your spiritual life, anything, right? It's always the eighth house, the eighth house, the eighth Lord, Saturn will always be involved in setbacks. You will never find a setback without these planets, okay? And then uh, when you have a setback, then depending on if that planet which is giving you a setback in your dasha is linked to the 12th house or not, you may have losses. If it is linked, then massive losses. But if it's not linked, then it might happen that, oh, you do not suffer any loss, uh, but you had no gain and you stayed in the same position for very long, depending on the dasha and the chart, of course. So therefore, the fourth house can tell you how will you uh, bounce back. Bounce back. How will you get back? How soon will you get back to track? And also, if you see, the fourth house is opposite to the tenth house, which is the house of success, Siddhi. So the fourth house tells you, see, the tenth house is where all your karmas are manifesting, where you are seeing the results, okay? So then what happens is the fourth house, which is there in Kendra, directly opposite to the seventh house, tells you when should you relax and when is the time to go to the next level. Therefore, people who do not have a good fourth house, they can have these problems, like they cannot relax. So when they are in the office, they are thinking of going and sleeping in the home or going to the party. And when they are uh, having a celebration with their friends or family members, then they are thinking, oh, I have this office work. Does it happen to you, right? So therefore, uh, this shows that you cannot be present because moon is the karaka for the mind. The mind gets exalted in Taurus, which is the present because Taurus represents the senses, okay? So whatever you are perceiving through your senses, like I'm making this video now, I'm, I am supposed to put all my attention here and not think of what will happen tomorrow or what happened yesterday, right? So... There you see some distraction, some email just came. <laughs> but yes, I am supposed to focus on this video. So why? Because I am getting this in, input from the um, from the camera and I am uh, seeing myself in the screen here. And I am concentrating, right? So I am focusing on my uh, speech, my ears and my eyes, right? And I am making some gestures with my hand. So this is what I should focus on now not anything else, okay? Imagine I'm uh, thinking, uh, I'm speaking, uh, oh yeah, you know, that happened, li, 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 li. Oh, if, I, if I keep speaking like this, how many of you will want to watch this video? <laughs> so therefore, mind, the moon gets exalted in Taurus, which represents our ability to grasp any particular experience that we are getting from this world, okay? It can be sensory, visual, or oral, or anything it can be, all right? And therefore, if you cannot be in the present, then you cannot enjoy life. And by enjoying, I don't mean to say some mundane materialistic enjoyment. Even in your spiritual life, suppose you are chanting some mantras and you are thinking, oh, I did not you know, read the Bhagavad Gita, I should have read. Or when you are reading, you are thinking, oh, I should have chanted properly. You know, I should have you know, heard my mantras more or maybe I should have done more mantras. So, that's what is happening. You are dancing from one place to the other. Okay. So therefore, if the fourth house is not good, what happens is when the tenth house is activated, you become successful or you become famous or you get a lot of money. Then what happens actually is that you cannot decide when you should stay at that level or when you should try to go to the next level or when you should go below it. Sometimes we take things and then we realize that this was not for us. So then it is good to step down. But sometimes it's important that we uh, carry on with what we have. And sometimes it's also important that we go to the next level, right? But how do you know when you should step down or you should stay there or you should go to the next level? That 
is the completion of the tenth house, and seventh house is the completion. Therefore, the seventh from the tenth is the fourth house. So the fourth house tells you about completion of your karmas, right? So, for example, you got a promotion and you stayed in a company for some years, for example. Then do you feel that your promotion is now completed, which means now you can go to the next level or maybe it's not complete. So you should stay there and gain that level of experience and knowledge to go to the next level later on. That's why fourth house is also the house of learning. When, when your learning is not complete, you are not ready. You are only ready when your learning is complete. Should I repeat? You are only ready when your learning is complete. So is your learning complete? No. Then don't go to the next level. Otherwise, you will have a suffering there. So then if you go to a next level, to the next level without learning, then what happens is you are creating trouble for the fourth house. Then you will lose your peace of mind because you won't be able to handle the responsibility that comes with the next level. So therefore, it is very essential that we understand that the fourth house controls all the prominent areas of our life. Okay. And of course, now there's a common question asked. You will see it in the comments. So many people will ask now. But sir, you are giving this uh, long speech about fourth house, but how do you read the fourth house, right? Well, for that, you have to learn astrology. You can't just see the fourth house. You will say, oh, I have Venus in fourth. What will happen? You know, What are results of you know Ketu Venus conjunction in the fourth house, right? There can be thousand results, okay? So you have to see so many parameters. Like for these are basics of astrology, but I'm still repeating because many people will be asking. So for example, how do you start? So whenever you start with the house, don't go to that house. First check the ascendant. What is the ascendant doing? Where is the ascendant placed? How is the fourth house placed from the ascendant? Okay. So then you have to see where which planet is there in the fourth house. Is there a planet or is it empty? If there are no planets, then you see, or suppose if there are planets, then you see which planet is sitting there, which houses does it lot? Is the ninth lord sitting there? Is the fourth uh, fourth lord himself sitting there? Is the second lord sitting? Is the third lord sitting? Is the ninth lord sitting or the twelfth lord sitting? And then if you see there are no planets, then you see if any planet is aspecting the fourth house. And if no planet is aspecting the fourth house, you check where is the fourth lord placed? Not of your Rashi chart, the fourth lord of your Bhav chart. And if you don't know Bhav chart, then please go and watch my video on Bhav chart, Exotic Astrology, B-H-A-V-C-H-A-R-T, Bhav chart, please type it. And uh, of course, once you see your temporary positions, which means specific to your chart, then you should see the general parameters like, where are these Karakas placed? What about Moon? What about Mercury? What about Venus? What about Mars? Mars shows, you know, land, property and all this, which is also linked to the fourth house. Once you check all this, you go to the next level, you go to the nakshatras and then you analyze what is going on. So it's a very detailed analysis. Do not waste your time doing all this nonsense, right? Okay, I have Venus in the fourth house. I'll have a big uh, luxurious mansion. No, it doesn't work like that, all right? You may have a luxurious mansion or you may not. Do you, what, do you know what Venus is doing in your chart? So even if you have Venus in the fourth house, do not come to this conclusion that you will have a you know, luxury vehicle like Mercedes or Bentley or Rolls Royce or BMW or Audi. Don't imagine that maybe Venus might be your eighth lord and Venus may create troubles in your existing vehicles or Venus may be conjunct Mars. So then uh, Venus Dasha may bring you uh, some property which you buy through the help of your relatives and family members and friends. And if Venus is your sixth lord and linked with Mars, then it can show something, uh, some property which you buy using loan, all right? So this is how you differentiate. So just don't give these blanket statements. Oh, I have Venus in fourth. What will happen, sir? Will, will I get this luxury vehicle or not, right? So therefore, 
then you go to the level of nakshatras okay and once you see the level at the level of nakshatras only then you can decipher depending on your chart what is actually going on and once you know then you can suggest remedies to the person whose chart you are seeing okay because then what happens is you will exactly know that when will things reach to completion because most of the questions will uh, that you get uh, while doing consultations will be either of career or marriage okay so you have to understand so specifically for career you really have to understand that seventh house from the 10th house is the fourth house so if a person asks you sir when will i get a new job or promotion so then you have to first check what is the situation of the fourth house in that dasha also what is the relationship of the dasha lord with the fourth lord that will tell you is the person ready to get a new job or is the person ready to get a promotion ready not externally but internally is the person ready to handle that level of responsibility that will come because if the person is not ready then if the even if the person gets this job or uh, has a new business opportunity the person will be forced to step down eventually because the person will not be able to put 100% all right so therefore and even for marrier for marriage it's very important because the fourth house is the 10th from the house of marriage so it's like the karma of your marriage that's a topic of some other day <laughs> all right but this is what i wanted to tell you that the fourth house controls the chart because it's very crucial very 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 crucial and i see most of the astrologers not using this unfortunately all right that will be all from my side so please check what's going on with your fourth house check with all the, these parameters rather than giving useless stupid blanket nonsensical statements like i have been us in the fourth will i have a big property all right there you go ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your patience uh, god is there with you all the time just look to him and you'll find him definitely irrespective of what is going on in your fourth house or with the fourth lord or with moon venus mars did i miss mercury <laughs> if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it below and if you want a consultation please go to the website down below all right thank you